brand new Bentley Mulzahn. It was just introduced here at the Geneva Auto Show. And this, well, this is the definition of bespoke. And coming up right now in the fast lane car, we're going to have a chat with the interior designer who helped design the interior, of course, of this new ultra luxury sedan. All right, Brett, we're standing here in front of the new Mulsanne. Is it Mulsanne or Mulsanne? I never know. It's Mulsanne. Mulsanne. Okay, well, I got it completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. And you're responsible for the uh, design of the interior. Correct, yes. So let's talk about the exterior first. Okay. Before we go to the interior. So what, 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 what inspired this? Obviously, there's a very strong family resemblance. Yes, yes, absolutely. And things have moved on on the exterior quite nicely. Uh, the big change is all around the front end of the car. So it's completely new front end. Uh, to the car. Um, the headlights have been specifically kind of almost designed specifically around jewels. Um, and the jewel, uh, literally. Absolutely, literally. Um, and one of the really distinctive changes on the front end, this very dominant wide grille which has increased 40 millimeters a side and has the vertical veins which have been reintroduced from some of our historic cars. Uh, my colleague Sang Yap Lee, who's head of exterior design, uh, really wanted to try and create a real dominant presence so that when this car pulled up behind you, you knew exactly yeah, what it was. Thinking, yeah, when you yeah. see it in your rear view mirror, you know it's a Yeah, Bentley. you knew exactly what it was. Um, and if you don't, you can look at the light and actually see the, exactly. <laughs> the Bentley in the Exactly. Light. So I uh, did a wonderful job really taking and kind of refreshing and on the long wheelbase. Of course, we had a huge job to reproportion the whole car and to design the car like it's always been designed specifically from the beginning with these proportions in mind rather than a car that's then been stretched. Um, I think that was one of the key objectives for the exterior and the exterior team did a fantastic job at doing that. Now I know you could get your Bentley in any color but this is certainly an interesting color combination. Sure, um, sure. I mean it's very daring right? It's got a little bit of the kind of gold. Pop. How do you come up with the color for a car that's about to be introduced at the Geneva Auto Show? How does that work? Uh, there's a, we have, a, as part of the styling team, yeah. uh, we have a whole color and trim department and they will put together different specifications which will kind of look at some which are very daring, some which are more safe, and then we'll really look at the balance of the whole show. I feel that. I feel like it's a yeah. little bit out there, but it's yeah. not like too Saudi Arabia, right? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> by that is just barely glitzy and over the top. Yeah, I think it needs to have a little something for a show for a motor show, but at the same time inspire customers as to what's possible. Uh, sometimes until you see it on a car, it's difficult to really tell what it's going to look like. And it's difficult to tell what's going to look like on the street, right? Because well, exactly under the right. light, it's a lot different. Yeah, than exactly the right. Exactly right. The, the reality of how it looks on the road can be very different. And it changes within countries because, you know, a car out in uh, the Middle East looks very different to one in England. Now, when you design the interior, obviously it's a cohesive unit, but the people who are buying this car are going to be sitting in the back seat. So do you pay more attention to the back seat or the driver? I think uh, for us, the, Mul the Mulzan as a whole, specifically on the standard wheelbase, is a real 50 50 split. Um, it's a car that you can be driven in, but but honestly, I don't know why you'd want to be because the driving experience has just been designed specifically uh, around driver involvement, uh, I, I, around the real beauty of the luxury of the drive. So it's a, it's a real true Grand Tourer. Um, but of course, as a, as a pinnacle luxury car, the, long, the extended wheelbase here is really about the rear environment. And, the, and so m the majority of the design work that's gone into the interior on this is about the rear environment. And, and creating almost a luxury capsule for those who are sitting in the back of the car. This is this kind of cocoon of environment that we're trying to create, um, where if, if you, you also desire, you can kind of shut the world out with the rear screen and the blinds, which we have here. Um, what did you use? Like, is this, this is so soft, my gosh. Yeah, this is like a new buck. Yeah, oh, it's um, incredible so that it just gives you that real comfort so you can relax. Um, on the seats here, we have this whole aircraft style seating so you can support your, your legs so you can recline your seat um, as well. And, uh, and so you can really create that. And then we also have this leg support that also drives up. If, uh, so it's, like a, it's like a private jet back here basically. So effectively it creates and replicates what you would specify in your private jet. Um, so you can either use this as a kind of leg support, it also extends. So 
so you can you can kind of get your environment here so it, it, it adapts to the customers needs this can be an environment where you can sleep where you can just relax where you can uh, use your champagne and your <laughs> you know entertainment scenarios but also it's about being connected to the the technology that you need so in the back of the seats we have a situation where we have these uh, completely deploying screens so the idea is that um, these screens have the ability to, to also kind of fully adjust uh, both up and down, but, uh, but also we have in here uh, both a 4G and a Wi-Fi hotspot so that basically this can adapt to whatever the needs of our customers are. Um, and it was designed to still have all the quality, the elegance, the detailing, the phenomenal choice of materials. In this, this. I know you guys can't tell, but this is an ashtray. That is an ashtray. And it feels it's about as heavy as an American softball. That's I mean, right. I mean, as much craftsmanship as went into this. That's right. So this was all designed specifically. It's so for this car. yeah, this was designed specifically for this car. So. Um, Sorry, we're doing an interview. Pardon? We're doing an interview. Pardon? Interview. Is it français or anglais? No, no, interview. No, please, interview. Moment. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> didn't didn't want to listen. No, he didn't want to listen to me. No. <laughs> so you were saying this has been. So this is everything in the car. Every detail, every switch, every um, you know mechanical element has to be designed. If you just reach in and, and touch the release handle, you'll see that there's knurling on the inside. Oh, beautiful. So even where you don't see things, it's about the tactility of knowing you're in a Bentley. So you can feel the knurling, which matches exactly the knurling on the back of the pedals for the driver's steering wheel. Um, and even the ash can, when we were given the opportunity to kind of say, okay, we need to design an ashtray or an ash can, you know, we took that on and said, well, it's removable from the car, which means it has to be special. Um, and so, of course, we put all the same detail, all the same effort into designing this little component as we do the whole car. So I, I can see like 50 years from now when somebody's restoring this car, right? Mm -hmm. That these are going to be selling on eBay for, <laughs> for like Very you possibly. Know, several you, thousand dollars. You may have forecast something <laughs> wise there. <laughs> it might be a good time to buy. Yeah, well, you, you need that last piece to make the Yeah, this is true. This is original. true. This is true. Just to make, complete the scene. So um, um, how much is all this? What's what's you know? If I want to get one of the long wheelbase ones, how much would would, would we be talking? So it very much depends on a kind of the way that you've uh, specified or customized it. But um, you're, you're you're looking upwards of kind of uh, two seventy. That seems reasonable for the amount of bespoke quality. You're sure, getting. sure. Reasonable. And 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 reasonable. I mean, yeah. uh, the the standard car starts about two twenty. This is pounds. I'm talking now. Um, and then right, not so reasonable now. <laughs> yeah, now it's maybe not so reasonable. But um, but then of course it very much depends on the way that the customer wants to either bespoke the car specifically to his needs or choose from the various options that we provided, especially in this extended wheelbase version with the center console. Um, if we lift the armrest up here, you can see also we've designed some specific tables here, which are a real feat of engineering. They have over 600 components. So this then spins around yep. we'll and then opens up that's beautiful um and has has a, a tilt function here also so you can uh make this work for whatever your needs are it's like nasa yeah <laughs> yeah no this was a real feat of engineering and and uh, a lot of people kind of did say oh my goodness you know wh why is this so complicated and uh i think if you if you look now let me just find the there's a release button on your side which there allows that yeah, to just flick up button, so and then, just comes down. and then you just press that and it goes back down and finds and, its and I suppose one of the beauties of the engineering of this is it doesn't take up as much room because it is rather big yes uh, exactly so it's kind of compact in the way that it deploys exactly so that's what we wanted we wanted a deployed we kind of had had an understanding of what we wanted in its deployed scenario so that you could sit your laptop on here again as a business use or for writing of what you know uh, 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 our uh, CEO, uh, Mr. Durheimer, said, I want to be able to sign a signature in the back of the car. And that sets a real precedent mm. for both the ride, the quality, the environment, and for the, the equipment that you're going to need and the feature you're going to need to be able to do that. So here's my easy question. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite part of this? You've been obvious, this has been your baby for a number of years. Yeah, for a, about the last two and a half years, yeah. yeah. So what's your favorite part? What are you the most proud of? So I actually am most proud of the integration of these screens. I yeah. think um, within most cars, 
the reality is the easiest thing is to kind of bolt a screen onto the back of the seat yeah. and to have it there. It's tacked on. And it's there. Yeah. It's there permanently. You know, when you don't want it, you have this kind of screen that sits there in your face the whole time. Uh, and in reality, that's a good practical solution. But for a pinnacle car like this, we really wanted to do something different where it completely retracted into the, into the seat, so it's gone. When you don't want it, it's completely out of the way. And is there a button for it to retract? So, yeah, I see. Let me get the camera here. Let's see. So, let's pull it out so people can see. Let me just see if I can get this to work. There you go. There we go. And there's even a cover on it. And there. Yeah. So, so, effectively, it's there when you want it. Yeah, and, and that's the idea behind Bentley design is that everything is there when you want it. Um, potentially at the touch of a button or, or through a mechanical element, which is kind of very engaging. Um, and there, there's beauty in being able to have something when you want it, and when you don't, it's gone. So can we uh, order out some fish and chips? And Absolutely. <laughs> let's get. Let's, the... let's order in. We can stay here for the rest of the show. We'd be happy, right? <laughs> well, thank you very much for taking the time to show me this new. Uh, how do you pronounce it? I always get it wrong. It's the Mulzan. Mulzan. It's the new, new Mulzan. I appreciate you taking the time. And uh, if you guys are interested, obviously, Bentley would love to build you one of these. Oh, you know what we didn't talk about? We didn't talk about this. The stone veneer. Yeah, the stone veneer. That's stone veneer. Thing, yeah. yeah, this is uh, being featured on this car. The stone veneer is actually literally a 0.3 layer of stone. So this is a copper stone. Um, and we have four stones in the range right now, but that we'll, we'll look to extend that. Um, but it's just a kind of different contemporary way of moving our material strategy forward. So it's, it's integrated into the wood waste rail, so it's this combination of wood, uh, veneer, and then stone that runs throughout the whole car. It just adds this other dimension of luxury, which most people uh, define along with kind of architecture or homes, and it's bringing those elements into the yeah. car. Well, thank you very much. You're I think very no welcome. people want to get in here, unfortunately. I, th I think, yeah, we're, uh, we're hogging. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Brad. or its top speed is 252 miles per hour where we hit the rev limiter at just over 20 seconds. So there are, I guess, faster cars out there like the Bugatti and so on, but I think in the real world, whoever is first to 250 is the winner in our book. Yeah, <laughs> That's how sure. we see it. So.